Hey everybody, Maureen here. Um, welcome back to the channel. This is where I share my personal and professional learning from the best resources in mind, body, health to help you get honest, get healthy, and build strength for lifting the heavy weight of being human. So I'll be sharing the best of mind, body resources I found helpful for learning about stress, nervous system, and gut health, exercise, sleep and diet, and much more from the wisdom of both Western psychology, philosophy, and neurobiology, and Eastern wisdom traditions. These are all to help you understand yourself better, gain personal agency in your life, and become better equipped for self-care. If you're a teacher or a parent or anyone who helps people grow and thrive, then these videos and resources will be critically important for you. We can care for others when we become experts in our own self-care. So knowing your own mind body better through self-study can alleviate not only your own suffering, but the suffering of others, spreading more understanding and love and less ignorance and fear both within us and among us. So learning more about our human nature and functioning, the modern landscape of our lives become a better, healthier, and more human place, less artificial, less alien, less threatening, and less polarized. Knowing yourself is more challenging than blindly following an ideology, marching with the crowd, or waving a placard in the name of social justice. So I hope these videos inspire you to learn to live and live to learn for optimal health and well-being, yours and ours collectively. I hope you share these videos, hit the like button, and subscribe. So today I'll be sharing uh, resources about being a teacher. Um, this is just a little bit about my uh, understanding of what it means to be a teacher. So throughout my lives, I, I've been asked many times to turn the teacher off. And that's been an invitation to listen. Well, I left the classroom to become a better listener. Uh, I was a high school English teacher, and I left that profession to become a trained uh, counseling psychologist. I've continued to listen to myself through my yoga practice, my thoughts, my emotions, my sensations, my gut, my heart, my intuition, and my inner guide. I've also listened to hundreds of podcasts and videos, maybe thousands, and I've listened to authors tell me their stories and teach me their clinical and theoretical wisdom. I can't keep all this learning to myself. I have to share because that's what teachers do. I can't keep, turn the teacher off. So here I am on my channel, once a teacher, always a teacher, which again, I've said previously, being a teacher just means you're a learner. I love to learn and I want to share uh, my learning with you. So this one is for teachers and parents because parents are really our first teachers um, and athletic coaches, anyone who influences young, growing um, human beings in the world, um, is a teacher so and we're all each other's teachers really so I'm a teacher I think a large part of my overall health and well-being is because I love learning and I'm hoping becoming a traveler like me on the landscapes for learning will help you become more healthy too I love to learn and share my love for the learning process with others I love learning from and with others and sharing all the resources other people create and share with me this seems to me to be an important dialogue we collectively share. This exchange of learning from our experiences and from the wisdom of our ancestors and our history. We teachers are perennial learners and we share our learning with others because we just have to. We can't keep it to ourselves. We share it for our own health and well-being for others. Teachers give as a way to receive. And my life's never been fuller, really, since I since I ended parenting and left education, um, it's been pretty bountiful, even if not financially so. We meet students where they're at. We listen, we observe with curiosity and unconditional positive regard and assess students' needs, desires, strengths, and make resources, tools, concepts, and practices and protocols available, accessible, salient and appropriate for students' unique learning, fullest expression and actualization. We help people live their dreams and ideals and values, help them set and achieve goals 
and reach and achieve their destiny through actualizing their potential. And every student is unique and different. And every interpersonal connection you make with a student is a unique and interpersonal relationship. They're all different. So you can imagine the amount of biological, neurobiological, mind-body stress of interacting with hundreds of students all day long, and then my own kids at home, and then teaching people's bodies in yoga, mind bodies in yoga, a um, lot of energy. So I had to learn, teach myself how to, to manage all of that energy and all of that interpersonal stress. And that's not negative stress always, but stress nonetheless. So later videos will talk about that. There's nothing more gratifying or fulfilling than to be a witness to another person's development and play a supportive part in the trajectory of finding and living their truth. Nothing better than that. Teachers motivate, inspire, provide resources and support people on their personal journey through life, through trial and error, tribulations, obstacles, and achievements. We get great joy from participating in, supporting, giving resources and celebrating every person's actualization of potential, as well as by showing up and being present as regulated and strong as possible ourselves to remain steady anchors for their trials and troubles and errors and failures. We have to be able to be regulated enough as teachers to be present for people to learn. Whether you're a psychotherapist, a body worker, a mom, a dad, a coach, whatever, a school teacher, any age, a yoga teacher, right? We have to be regulated and mindful enough to hold for other people to be able to learn. It's a messy, messy process. Teachers also take the blowback of frustration and truth learning that causes a lot of discomfort and pain in people who are learning. We can handle the tantrums and the name calling and the reluctance and the resistance and outright refusal to accept and live their truth because we know it's scary and hard and they feel afraid and vulnerable. And we only know this because we've done it ourselves. Teachers have to go through this process themselves to know and understand their students. There's nothing better for my own health and growth than to know myself and love myself and my humanity in order to show up for others as they try to do the same. We have to be honest in our learning endeavor with ourselves and others for their fullest integration to live lives of integrity and truth. We cannot live half lives, focusing only on our preferences and desires while ignoring realities that might not be what we want. This acceptance of a whole, honest human life experience is not always easy because honesty can be painful and the truth hurts, yet it can also set you free. Growth entails loss, sacrifice, thus grief, Difficulty and resistance to letting go so that something new can blossom. People are challenged to let go. They want to feel like they're doing something and they clutch on to even uh, coping and adapting skills that are detrimental to them and hurt other people. It's familiar. It's what is known. It's fear motivated. It's habitual, and that's all okay. That's how we humans adapt and cope to the environment. There's no shame in that, but to help people see that's how they are, what they do, how they function, what their habits are, and repetitions, and whatever, by knowing themselves, they can they can choose to let some of those things go. They can become more regulated to be able to do it and they can suffer better and suffer less unnecessarily. So suffering comes from the world around us and from within us and the ways we respond and cope and adapt to what happens. Good teachers know this and they accompany, guide and model how to live as a learner and to learn honestly for fullest actualization and optimal vitality. 
Teachers make mistakes too. Yet they know how to acknowledge weakness and their limits and their faults and their flaws and their fear and their own nervous system fluctuations to then come back into balance to repair and reconnect, to live their own truth and to repair and reconnect with others. This is the ongoing movement of being a human learner. Balance is achieved, but does not remain fixed and static, right? There's never, there's balance doesn't, the pendulum doesn't stay in the middle without moving. It moves, it moves. It's a relative balance, a pendulum, a titration, which connotes continuous change, fluidity, flexibility, and movement, a riding of the waves of yin and yang. Teachers do not prevent or spare students of their suffering. I'm going to say that again because... There's some pretty corrupt ideas happening in the world right now, especially within the in education about trigger warnings and safe space mentality. Teachers do not prevent or spare students of their suffering. We have to come into direct contact with suffering to be healthy, to grow and learn. Rather, they teach them how to be curious, more acquainted, more regulated and safe to be able to to manage this process until it becomes a familiar friend. Befriending one's own human nature is to become intimate with one's suffering and use one's inner tools and resources to learn to suffer constructively. That is constructing your life. Good, teaching, good teachers um, teach people to suffer in the service of love rather than fear. Teachers demonstrate and provide tools tailored to each person to know their own suffering and learn how to ameliorate it with, a, with their own attention and unconditional love, as opposed to living a life of fear, which comes from a resistance to suffering, a desire to escape or ignore it, make it go away. The fear of making mistakes, fear of risk, fear of deprivation and fear and insecurity that comes from vulnerability and uncertainty, which is just a part of life. We're vulnerable. Life is uncertain. We don't know as much as we, we think we know a lot. There's way more we don't know. That's uncertainty. Teachers teach through show and tell how love heals all wounds. Teaching is a cooperative, communal, socially engaged, emotionally laden, biologically based interactive process and experience of both body and mind. It is not strictly academic, intellectual, or talk-based embodied learning. Teachers teach human beings, not content or ideologies. We don't deliver curriculum and, and, re and, and, and enforce policies. Okay, teachers teach human beings. There's no such thing as a one-size-fits curriculum or pedagogy, though there are more and less effective ways to teach and learn. There are wise teachers whose truths and methods have withstood the test of time. I am a teacher. I was a high school humanities teacher, meaning I used the tools of stories and storytelling, of listening and dialogue to help students become fully expressed humans. I am a teacher, a Bikram yoga teacher, meaning I use the tools of yoga, breath work, nervous system regulation, focus and concentration of attention, mind-body balance and integration practices to help students become more fully realized and actualized, fully expressed humans. I am a teacher, a parent of four, meaning I was my children's first and most important teacher of the way to be human, human literacy, how to survive and thrive as a mind-body being in the world. I am a teacher, a behavioral health counselor and coach, meaning I use the tools of psychotherapy to help people know themselves as mind-body beings and how to manage human experience, like change and suffering and growth for their fullest actualization and expression. I share concepts and tools for understanding human nature and individuals' own unique nature and social conditioning how each client has been culturally conditioned, parented, educated to be who they are in this moment and provide hope of plasticity, transformation, and transcendence for who they might become to actualize their potential, encourage them with love to become courageous to be fully expressed. 
I'm a lifestyle coach, meaning a teacher who shares her learning tools, therapeutic presence, and practices with others for optimal health and functioning of the body, mind, and spirit. I'm a teacher. I preach only what I practice through sharing what I learn and sharing my love of learning without conditions, without expectations. It's not about the grades. I do this for my own health and others' healthy development, not for money. A life of and for learning is a journey. It has highs and lows, peaks and valleys, steps backwards and forward. It's imperfect, messy, full of nuance and gray areas. It's amazing. It's vertical, deep within each of us, and it's horizontal across space and time, past, present, and future. It's deep and dark and light and infinite and expansive. As your teacher at Landscapes for Learning, I will encourage you to know yourself for wisdom and wellness, and I will share how I got to know myself and the tools and resources out there that are high quality, cutting edge, new and exciting to help you on this journey of self-study for self-realization and self-actualization for a meaning, life of meaning and purpose and optimal vitality. When you learn more about yourself and how you function as a human being, a body and a mind, you will grow in more certainty, more safety, more personal agency and power. You'll grow less shameful and guilty, less sick and weak, more strong and resilient. This is all good for you and everybody else. Knowing yourself is simple advice. It's simple but not easy. So please spend your time, money, attention, and energy on becoming a willing, curious, persistent learner for a great life. There are loads of us travelers on the landscapes for learning, in here and out there. Many people engaged in working out within to lift the heavy weight of being human. Many of us getting honest and getting healthy. So join, join us and let learning be your lamp. A lamp that lights the way toward a wonderfully meaning-filled embodied life of love and truth. And I will be your teacher. It's something I take very seriously. And I'm, I'm so full of gratitude that I'm able to do this online with people from around the world, far beyond my classroom and uh, in the northern suburbs outside of Boston. Um, so expanding learning, it's just... Um, it's so life-giving to be more open and expansive and to share resources. I mean, if you think about it, you know, how, how have we humans survived? We've gathered together and we've shared our resources to grow and thrive. So continuing to do that, pay it forward. I hope to encourage everybody else to do the same, and I'll see you back here next week, next video. Take care.